Greetings one and all. Welcome back to my kitchen here today where I am going to be making a dish from Kenya again <laughs> and this time a specialty sort of um, really regional type um, dish it's called Lalea and it comes from Western Kenya and it's specific to um, sort of a certain like tribal demographic the Luau people they um, they make this and I know about this of course because regular viewers know I've recently um, been married to a Luau woman from Western Kenya and this is something that they typically do in the village A to help preserve meat after they've killed a beast or something and B just because it's a tasty way to, to eat um, beef so um, I tried it for the first time in February very first time in February and that was two days before my um, my wedding my Nyombo my traditional wedding and I was staying in a lodge um, this is in a sort of fairly regional area and where my wife's village is I wasn't allowed to stay in the village being the groom so I stayed in a nearby lodge and they had a little restaurant and I'm so glad the I got to talking with the owner of the lodge and they said you have to try this dish and I did so now I'm going to recreate it here in my Australian kitchen let's get on with it a lot of talking not much cooking so I've got here some blade roast and I've got so it's in a fairly large sort of roast sort of format and it's like two sort of big rectangles to start off with I'm just going to split that uh, down the middle And then you sort of um, treat it in like a strip. So to, to achieve that, again, I'm just going to cut it carefully. Kind of like so far down. Then I'm going to turn it and just sort of keep working it around. So we get sort of like a sort of a blocky sort of strip and then a long straight again you kind of just be careful especially with a knife you don't need sharpening and I'm kind of happy with that I don't want to take too big a risk so I'll just get on and well actually I'll show you what I'm going to do once I get into a strip like that I've got some salt here I'm going to liberally salt it and I'm just going to whack it in there and I am going to be I've just also started a charcoal fire downstairs and once I finish doing um, all this meat like that, I'll take you down there. Alrighty guys, so I'm just outside now. Um, I've just got a few of these barbecue brick things sort of heated up. Um, what I'm going to do with them is I've just got a little packet of um, uh, wood chips. I'm just going to tip a few of those just over the top this first stage we're not actually um, too worried about cooking the meat right through we're, what we're doing is just getting a, a bit of a nice smoky flavour into it before we dry it out that should be plenty
Alrighty guys, so I'm back here in um, the kitchen as you can see um, Yeah, like I say, that preliminary um, cooking there wasn't really a cooking I was just, um, yeah, infusing some flavour Mainly that smoke flavour I wanted uh, into my beef um, Now it's time to dry our beef out And it's at this point um, I'll diverge from what um, they'd usually do in the village because in the village they would sun dry it over a few days now I've uh, here in my home kitchen I've um, done, a, done it before a few times you might have seen it if you're a regular viewer where I dry beef out in my oven at a really really low temperature so what I do is I just put it on at um, 50 degrees Celsius and then I get a little bit of foil and just chock open the door a little bit and then I just leave my meat in there for like several hours so that's what I'll be doing today and this is a dish like like I say in the village it would take a few days it's gonna take me until tomorrow because even after it's um, it'll dry out by tonight but um, I want to leave it until tomorrow before I finish this dish off Let's get it in that oven, let's get it drying out. Um, yeah, so yeah, I've only had this in for a few minutes, but just a quick um, correction on my pronunciation. This dish, pronounced properly, is Alia. Goodness knows what I said earlier, but it wasn't a Leah. <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> All right, I'll let it get on with um, dehydrating, drying out. <laughs> I just thought I'd better correct that now while I remembered. Alrighty guys, so here we are the next day, I've um, yeah, I've completely dried out my um, meat here now, so this is now Aaliyah, um, as you can see it's just gone really hard, all the moisture sort of come out of it, that's using that oven technique, as I said in the village they would use, um, they would dry it in the sun, it would take three days, maybe two or three days um yeah but this worked well um for me that showing you that technique i used just on that really low 50 degrees with the door chopped open of the oven it took about eight or nine hours to get the meat to this stage and then i've just left it uncovered in the fridge overnight so like i say here we are the next day now i've also alluded to if you hear the term aliyah um it can mean two things it can mean just simply the beef that's in this state the dried beef basically like the beef jerky but aliyah is also the name of a dish which is what we're going to be making so um i'm going to get on with that now first of all i'm going to get my strips of aliyah and i'm going to cut it into chunks and i'll just show you that's, you can see it's really dry. I'm going to put that in a pot, so fairly large chunks. And I'll get on with that, cut up the rest of this, and I'll get back to you. Now, once I've got my alia all cut up in a nice sort of good sized chunks like that in my pot, I'm just going to cover it with water
and I'm going to bring that to a boil and then just I'm going to simmer it just for a little while just um, until that meat gets um, a little bit softened. Okay guys, now just while my Aaliyah there is um, boiling away, um, I'm just going to chop up some veggies. Now Aaliyah, I'm absolutely assured is, um, you don't use spices, you don't use flavourings. It's all about the flavour that's already in that beef um, that we've done by smoking it and sort of drying it, drying it out. Um, so all we're going to add to that is I've got four tomatoes here, which I'm going to chop up shortly. And in a lot of recipes you'll see they'll use like an onion, like a usual round sort of onion, and they'll chop that up. But I'm also assured traditionally I'm more inclined to use these spring onions. And as you can see I've just cut off the real sort of leafy green bits, and I'm just going to cut these roots off as well. And then I'm just going to chop them as well. Um, that meat's nearly ready, so by the time I chop these, I'll be ready to move on. Alrighty guys, moving right along. I've chopped up those onions and tomatoes. I've just taken my beef off the heat there. I've got some ghee in my uh, wok here, heating up. Now... I'm going to use my um, slotted spoon to get that beef out of my water there and give it a bit of a fry in the ghee. What we want to do though is make sure you keep that water. We're going to be using that later. And that is, like I say, one of the essential flavours is our smoky, meaty flavour. And um, a lot of that flavour is now in that water, so we want to keep that. Alright, we'll get a bit of a sizzle going with our beef here. Alrighty guys, now once that's been fried away there, a couple of minutes, I'm going to add those tomatoes. And onions. Uh, in this case the spring onions or scallions, as my American friends call those. And we'll just keep frying them in that ghee. Alright, we'll get on with simmering that for a while, frying that for a bit longer. Alright my friends, that's been um, frying away there for a good 10 minutes or so. That tomato starting to break down a bit. The next thing I'm going to add to that, a little bit of a surprise ingredient, I guess for us, not for my Luau friends. So I've just got some full cream milk and I'm just going to add probably about three quarters of a cup. So I'm going to mix that through and again we're just going to let that uh, simmer away for another um, not too long. Maybe seven or eight minutes. Alrighty guys, so my Alea has been um, simmering away now with the addition of that milk. Um, yeah, what did I say, yeah, about seven or eight minutes, maybe closer to ten, I'm not sure. But it's looking good, it's looking um, nice, it smells good. All that tomato and that continues to break down. So now, I am going to get it on for a bit of a longer simmer. So I want to add a bit of water um, and then get it to a bit of a low simmer again for a while. Now, I did say um, at the start our main flavour is our smoky, 
beef flavour and of course that's why I kept um, the water that we boiled that beef in so you definitely don't want to lose any of those flavours I mean look at that I don't know if, how well you can see that it's just a full that's full of flavour and we want to use that that is one of our main flavourings so in that goes and again we're going to get that to a boil and then down to a low simmer and we're just going to simmer that away for as long as it takes to reduce that liquid down I am just going to taste it I know we've salted the beef but that's the only seasoning we've added yeah we need some salt as well a bit more we'll mix that through like I say no other flavorings no pepper no chilies no um, other spices this is Western Canyon cooking and we're just savoring the flavors that are in those ingredients and look you know my channel I love my spices I love my chili and all that but trust me the flavors that are in this just in those ingredients is fantastic but we'll I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> because it's looking really good all right guys I'll um, get that to a simmer and I'll get back to you <clears throat> hey darling Hello. how are you <laughs> Bye, how are you? <coughs> you? You caught me at a minute. Hang on, I'll show you. Ah, you're cooking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looks good. <laughs> I watched that again. I'm trying to make a garlic again. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work though. <laughs> The flour's wrong, you know. The flour's wrong, I've got. The corn flour, it's not right. It's different. Yeah, you want the bad one. Yeah. But I'll try. I'm just trying. <laughs> we'll call you later. I'll call you back, and I'll call you back so shortly, darling. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I love you. I love you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> all righty guys so i've just served up a plate of my alia um i've tried to make some ugali here at the back with corn flour you've seen me try and make that before it works but it's not the best ugali it's, <laughs> it's nowhere near as good as what my wife makes in kenya but um it works it does the job um anyway less on that more on the alia i'm really really happy with that it was a little bit of a process as you saw like smoking that beef giving that beef some smoke flavor first and then that long slow drying process but um and then cooking it into a a stew absolutely sort of spice free other than um seasoning salt um flavored by the tomato the onion, like I say, the smoky beef flavour. Let's give it a try. So I will get a bit of my dud ugali. <laughs> it works, but yeah, I'm not real happy with it. And just push that into a ball. Like so. We'll get a bit of our beef into that ugali. It looks like this. I 
some of our sauce in there. You can absolutely serve this with rice or bread, whatever you want. I'm just sort of appeasing my, my wife, <laughs> who called. Just coincidentally, not planned, while I was trying to make that the garlic, but she couldn't rescue it for me. Like I say, it'll be alright. Let's taste it anyway. <laughs> actually, despite the looks, that the garlic actually tastes pretty good, but it's all about the alia. The alia is absolutely delicious as advertised. It's got that beautiful, beefy, rich, um, slow cook, um, smoked sort of flavour with the tomatoes, um, the onions. It's just absolutely delicious. Really yummy. Honestly, it doesn't need extra spices. Those flavours do just stand out on their own. That was the thing I remembered when I um, did eat it back there in Maharoni was the name of the little town. And um, yeah, really, really happy with that, guys. I really hope you give that a try. It's delicious. Something really different than what we're used to here in the West, um, but well worth um, um, tasting if you're a little bit adventurous and you want to try some food from different cultures. This this is a good, easy one to try. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who's subscribed to the channel. Really, really appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber yet, can I ask that you hit that subscribe icon and subscribe? Um, yeah, it doesn't cost you anything. There's no obligation on your part. It really does help my channel out in that YouTube algorithm. I'm always struggling with it. I mean, my channel's very, very small. I'm a minnow. But, um, yeah, I, I enjoy seeing new subscribers. I get a few every day. I mean, a few. <laughs> But um, it's, it's great, and I love interacting. If you want to leave a comment, I'll try and get back to you. I usually do. Um, if you just leave a like, or um, you can share the video, that'd be great as well. Alright, I will see you all next time.